Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to uh, ME 180. I'm an error systems class for uh, the first section of the summer. It's called uh, uh, first six weeks. Okay. First six weeks. So um, welcome to this class. Uh, you are part of the history. And it's for the first time in the history of the school we ever had a uh, four credit summer course like this. And it's lab intensive and the lecturers labs in the same place. Okay? And uh, in Castle. So this is very historic. I'm very glad that you are part of this. I know it's not easy to make the decision to take this six weeks, so let's maximize our learning experience and take the journey. So the only thing you need to do is to budget enough time for it. Do you have a rough idea? Every week I expect you how many hours you are going to spend on this course? At least 20 hours. Okay? At least, at least 20 hours. So it was in the syllabus. It's an expectation. And that amount of time adding together, then you deserve to earn four credits. That's, so I understand? So if you say, oh, I've got a job, I, you know, please. If you don't have 20, 20 hours to spend on the class, budget it, okay? Then you should not take this course. You have time to drop, okay? Time to drop. But I believe everybody is going to uh, decided to take this course, okay? And we have a, a class capacity of 24 students on this classroom. We cannot do more than 24, okay? Um, great. So here's today's uh, plan. So supposedly we have three hours lecture, Monday, uh, Monday and Wednesday morning. We have three hours lecture uh, labs in a Tuesday, Thursday afternoon, 2.30 to, so it's in the syllabus, okay, in the syllabus. We're going to go through that, okay, we're going to go through that. Um, so the first part of the three hours will be syllabus, lab, and safety, and get you motivated. I'll invite you to watch some movies and see our um, lab credentials we did, okay? So you, you keep hearing about, oh, we, we have a great drone lab on campus in the Valley or in the nation or in, in the world, but you, you didn't get a taste of uh, how good we are, right? So there are research posters put uh, everywhere and we find time to go through some of those posters about our work, what we do, and ask questions for us. So uh, also, we are going to maintain office hours as specified on this syllabus. Both TAs and myself will do that. So let me introduce you our TA, if you haven't known. Bo is our TA. Go Xiang, or Zhang, uh, call him Zhang. Uh, and Zhang is also, uh, will be available to everybody. So uh, for this lab, we have a very strong team to make, you, uh, make sure you will be successful. But there's no guarantee that saying that uh, uh, you, are pa you are going to pass FAA knowledge test. I would like to say passing that test, having a drone license, pilot license, is only a very small part of our learning outcome. We're going to go through that, okay? So um, that's actually relatively easy, huh? relatively easy. So let me um, first go through a few things. First, you have seen this. This is the room 151. And the outside the room, you will see it is called a suite 860. Okay, 860. And uh, so, and your entrance from the front door, you are going to get card access. Okay, uh, it's being processed. Okay, so pro probably today is not working. Maybe, maybe tomorrow or the after tomorrow it will work. So, I think, uh, <clears throat> so we have six weeks. Every week we have two lectures. For each lecture, I'm going to have uh, week zero one, lecture A, part one. So two parts, okay? Okay, it's usually 275 minutes uh, parts. 
and uh, we have a break in between. It's not like all the way three hours. It was very toxic to everybody. So it's called PowerPoint poisoning. Okay, we don't want to do that. So here is uh, the outline of today's uh, first module regarding got a feeling about now we are at the drone age. Okay, drone age. You heard about the Wright brothers? How many of you never heard of that? No, <laughs> never heard of that. No, you heard about it. Wright brothers were in the Wright brothers age 2.0. Okay, 2.0. So we'll be part of that. We'll be part of that. And so then by 11:30, okay, 11:30, uh, Dr. Stark, my former PhD student. Uh, now it's the director of the safety center. He will be here. Okay, he will be here uh, to go through some of those magic three letters. So University of California Environment, Health, and Safety Center of Excellence and Mineral Systems <laughs> Safety Center. It's long, long abbreviations. So, but you should be knowledgeable about this. This is the ever first safety center established in the university system in the United States. So all other systems like the University of Texas system, University of Illinois systems, so those university systems, they are trying to follow our model here. Okay, our model here. So uh, he will explain to you how you can uh, be compliant to the FAA rule. Uh, FAA stands for Federal Aviation, what? Administration. Administration? Oh, good. Mm, I thought it's agent. It might be. Might Agency. Be. Oh, no, no, no. Administration. Okay. It's like NASA. Okay. Then uh, every lecture, I'm going to use the quiz to do the attendance check and also to do some <laughs> surveying about your opinions. Okay. So statistically, I understand, oh, half of the class do not know what is Ohm's law. <laughs> Do you know Ohm's law? Yes. This is a prerequisite. But we made a mistake on this course regarding prerequisites, okay? We didn't add a prerequisite. So how many of you never took circuits? You all took circuits. Great. But we didn't reinforce that this time. Some mistake in the system. So somebody can sneak in without any prerequisites and can register. Then I have to make sure he will be successful. Okay. Anyway, so that's a good sign of our good start. Thank you for having the circuits in place. So they'll make my life easier. Okay. If we don't have circuits, life will be hard. Okay. Excellent. Um, how many of you took uh, mechatronics? Uh, one, two, three, four, eight. Okay. How many of you took vibration already? Most of you. Oh, that's excellent. How many of you are freshmen? No, cannot. How many of you are a sophomore? No, you cannot. You have to be in a professional program, right? So, so uh, how many of you are senior to be? Two, three. How many of you are seniors? majority of you. How many of you are super seniors? No? Okay. Wow. Good. So we have good mix. Excellent. Excellent. I have uh, more confidence in your success right now. This is exactly as what I expected about this composition of the class. Everybody has circuits. Okay. And, uh, and you are in the, in, the, in the junior, later junior and earlier senior part or even last semester of senior. Who are in the last semester? One semester left? Okay. One semester. Two semesters left? Three? Four? Five? No, you don't even know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay. It's understandable. It's understandable. There are some uncertainties in life. So, you don't really know how many semesters left. That's understandable. So don't worry about it. 
So uh, now we're going to go through uh, some of the appetizers and uh, the drone age. Let me share with you one thing. Um, about four years ago, I was invited by, uh, to give a public lecture uh, in the Castle Air Museum. You drive here, you pass through that air museum, right? That air museum will cost you $8 to visit, okay? Uh, but they also do regularly about public lecture. So they invite uh, professors from UC Marseille to give talks to the public in plain languages. So I was invited to do this called Frontiers lecture series for. So uh, in, in 2003, uh, 2013, uh, the, the rules are not very clear regarding FAA. So they passed in 2012 the FAA Reauthorization Act. Um, so the Congress asked them to open their space for private entities to fly aircrafts for commercial purposes. Uh, before that, you don't even uh, think about it, okay? Because there's no pathway, no pathway for private companies to fly drones to make money. No way, no way. Even you're, you have a drones that is owned by public entity, like a public university, you need to go through a very lengthy approval process called COA. So, at that time, I already had uh, many COAs experience when I was in my previous institution, Utah State University. So I, I know how it works. But at that time, the public has some sense of anti-drone kind of thinking. So I was invited to uh, Sacramento for a public hearing about uh, why drones are good, uh, or could be good, why we should not be, you know, uh, hostile to the uh, drone use. So that kind of public image at that time is that way. So the night before I gave this talk, I was imagining that and people will line up, I pass through them and people were holding a placard uh, protesting my, my lecture. <laughs> so question now is, did that happen? No, it didn't. <laughs> so, in fact, it's uh, actually a very friendly uh, setting, and everybody asked questions, and uh, it was really, actually, very, really good. It went so well. So, in there, I shared a movie uh, about an uh, interview uh, from um, John Stewart. You know this guy? I don't know. I don't watch him very often, but it appears to be very interesting. So let's take a look at uh, the public opinion at that time, four years ago. And um, so have a... Oh, no. Why? It was working, right? So... Cannot play mo media. Why? Uh, I think I need to uh, give up uh, this nice um, speaker, but it somehow is not very nicely working. They want me to restart, so I'll give up that. So I'm going to put this one back. Uh, recording device. Uh, sound device. Playback device. No. Just use this one. Then I reload it. It's very interesting to watch. Actually, it's a one hour long program. Right now, it's free online. Okay? Uh, at my, uh, uh, four years ago, it's not so free at that time.
Let me turn off the lights. The United States Air Force calls them remotely piloted aircraft, but most people know them as drones. No longer just eyes in the sky, they're taking the pilot out of the cockpit and revolutionizing warfare by allowing us to see and kill from half a world away. We can easily make out to people from five, six miles away. You can put a weapon through a window-sized opening with ease. I am going to shut my window. Please welcome Missy Cummings! Technology of this is so, even the rise of the drones has such a, a sci fi kind of a vibe to it. You know, there's always that sense whenever the United States makes a sort of technological jump in terms of its warfare. because the word drone connotates a kind of stupidness and they're definitely getting smarter. Uh, they're actually very simple aircraft and that's one of the reasons they're so popular because they're a lot cheaper to build and they're a lot cheaper to fly and maintain. You don't have to have an expensive pilot that costs millions of dollars to train. But doesn't that immediately take away any advantage the United States has? Because if we have any advantage, it's that we like to spend a huge amount of money on defense. <laughs> if, I mean, the only advantage we have is like, you've got one tank, we've got a million. Yeah. So we're just building more drones. More drones. Yeah. Is there, you know, technology has in some ways democratized people's ability to do a tremendous amount of damage. You know, if you can cheaply make a drone and arm it with a missile, you know, things that only a country could do before can be done by individual groups. And not to only discuss the dystopian vision of, of drones, but is that, is there a division of, of your office that works only on the perverted use <laughs> of, of, of that? Well, every technology can be perverted in some way, but I think one of the areas that people don't really think about when we talk about drones are what are going to be their commercial applications? For example, in five to ten years, I think you'll see FedEx, UPS, unmanned aircraft flying our packages around. I'm working on. Oh thank God! <laughs> I uh, I thought you were going in a different direction with my FedEx, UPS, we're going to FedEx, and you. They won't ring on your doorbell anymore. Just boom! <laughs> Open window. Here's your package. <laughs> You know, that, that the ease of it allows the government to more easily overstep its authority or its, its moral. <coughs> is, it, is it easier to lose sight of its killing power given the distance that we have? Well, we've been backing up warfare out of the battlefield for many, many years, from the high altitude bombing to Tomahawk missiles, ballistic missiles. So. Flying drones uh, is getting us further from the target, but that has been a long existing trend. I think the military does a fantastic job of having the regulations in place and discussing it. There's a, an entire conference, for example, of military ethics that, that does nothing but discuss enemy vehicles and warfare. Can we go to that one? Or? Sure, I, it's a real, <laughs> it's riveting. That's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> but I think. There is a danger for small countries because the barrier to entry is so low. Anyone can go to do-it-yourself drones and develop that technology and put any kind of weapon. It doesn't have to be a missile. It could be anthrax, for example. And so that is a very real concern, and the government is on it. They're working on how to 
to defend against these kind of attacks. Because there is, there, there, you get the sense that whatever people can make, you can be sure they'll use it for somewhat of a, a nefarious. It, it seems like we've never, like even atomic energy. How do the scientists feel about that pressure? How do the people working on that? Is that a, a, a moral concern for them as well? Is that something that's always at the forefront? I think so, but I used to fly F-18s for the Navy, and I'll tell you that warfare, flying an F-18 10 years ago, was much more difficult because it was just me maybe talking to one other person on the radio and having to make all the decisions under stress over a target. Today, we have drones and other people on the ground, and they're all talking to each other. They're talking to their air traffic control plane in the sky. They're talking to people at the Pentagon, for example. So we've got a lot more people talking to each other in real time. And so I think drone warfare is actually a safer, more effective form of warfare. We're, I think we're having less collateral damage, and certainly we're having less blue-on-blue blue kills, which is when we kill our own people. Right. What about a death star? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I signed that petition. <laughs> <laughs> no, why didn't you sign that petition? It is, you know, when, when you think about it, you say it's, it's sort of an, an easier technology. It is, is that the kind of thing where, you know, I always, listen, I watch a lot of movies. And so anything like the clone armies, drone, you know, all those types of things. You really do begin to, to see, oh, 30 years from now, some of this stuff, there, there may be robotic warfare where there are, you know, killing fields of robots that are just kind of at each other. Sure, DARPA's got a grant out right now of DARPA? DARPA? <laughs> Defense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so uh, that, they've got work going on right now to do that. But I also think that there's a lot of work going on inside the military and outside the military. Again, like I said, to commercialize these. But even to do humanitarian aid, for example, I'm working with the Navy on a helicopter that can be called in by somebody in distress, and the helicopter can take itself off. You call it from your own smartphone, it finds you and lands and can do an emergency evacuation. No, no human pilot involved. Can you do that with taxis? <laughs> I think Google's on that. I think Google's, Google's on that. that. Jack, can you stick around for a couple minutes? Sure. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, you can watch Nova's Rise of the Drones on PBS This Week. You can catch it on the Nova website. Missy Cummings. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Well, can you turn on the light? Please. So you heard at that time, 2013, public view about drones is like this uh, angle guy and asking questions always from that angle, saying that, oh, you know. But Missy, she left uh, MIT, by the way, and uh, recently joined another university, I think it is, um, ah, I forgot. <laughs> You, you can find her, Missy Cummings. Um, she was a jet fighter, okay, pilot, and um, she is trying to defend that uh, the drones could be used for good, right? So for good. So our lab, starting from more than ten years ago, uh, doing the drones for good. So here are something I. Uh, I try to con I try to convince people that the drones can be really good. Agnier is a remote sensing platform that is completely autonomous. It takes off completely by itself. It flies around according to a pre programmed by itself and lands completely autonomous. And while it's flying, it captures. The plane automatically goes into a pre-programmed flight plan and takes pictures of the ground every four seconds. After its flight plan, it comes back to the ground station. After about an hour's worth of flight, we may have 350 to 400 images. The best solution is to take all of the images together, stitch them together to make a georeptified mosaic. Give them the visual imagery, but we can give them the near infrared imagery. 
Uh, you can also then take it a step further and actually use the two images to automatically classify the plant species that you're interested in. So you get a, uh, got a feeling that taking pictures could be useful, right? So that is, at that time, usually we do this picture uh, by manned aircraft. Using our manned aircraft for that remote sensing purpose, not so many people was focusing on that more than 10 years ago. My group is among the first to focus on remote sensing using drones, cheap, low-cost drones, and to make the remote sensing capability available at the personal level, at the personal level. So imagine in the 1940s, in 1950s, uh, talking about computing, okay? So computing at that time, you say, oh, personal computing, people may say, oh, are you mad? So the computing is very expensive. It's, um, the computer is a building size, okay? Uh, the size of a building, okay? Uh, it's owned by the government, so it's never personal. But today, you see, the personal computing is, uh, okay, we take it for granted, right? So you have a, a computer here, you know, very powerful. All right. So in the future, in the future, the, per the remote sensing will be even further into the, not just by personal, and into the personal. So the Internet of Things, everything will be, you know, connected. And your coffee mug will remind you, don't drink anymore. You, you got enough thirsty today. You can send an email to your heart, the, <laughs> you know, and so on and so forth. So, so that's what we did in uh, the, using the fixed wing uh, in, in Utah State. So right now, I'm going to show you something, uh, two things. One is water, one is gas. So uh, flying the drones with a very uh, good reason. So this is the one I put here. Oh, you don't see it? Okay, let's continue. What you hear the noise is the wind. So this is called water sampling drones. When you want to take a water sample, you cannot send a person there to get a water sample because there's no way you can go. You may sink because of the the the, the the marsh environment. You cannot even use a boat because the water is too little. Okay? And you cannot send a vehicle. You have to use a drone, right? So that's exactly that. I think we are among the first to do this kind of uh, water sampling drone. Can be uh, launched and land, landed on the surface of water. 
But imagine, if you have a drone that can fly, take off and land on the surface of water, it's meaningless. If you don't have the water sampling payload, okay? If you don't have that box, then why you fly, you know? So, So this is a project supported by Citrus and uh, collaborated with uh, uh, UC Davis professor and uh, try to do environmental DNA sampling, okay? And we publish papers on this direction as well. So we fly drones for a good reason, okay? A good reason. There are lots of opportunities there, okay? So if you figure out a very unique way unique reason to fly the drone then you can start your own business right so that's why I will keep emphasizing that this course is very special in the sense that I emphasize everybody should have a sense of entrepreneurship meaning you become your boss okay you create jobs based on your innovative ideas, okay? Okay, so in the end of the lecture, uh, in the end of this course, you are going to form a, a startup company, okay? Startup company. I'll invite- She cared for him very deeply, and he cared for her very much also. Why this? <laughs> Love is one of the foundations of- Okay, I know that. And um, so I'm going to show you something I just got. Um, so this is for water sampling, flying a drone for water sampling, okay? Um, and let me see if I can do this. What? Okay. Um, I need to send this thing, it's called... Uh, I think I have something here. Oh, I think I have something here as well. Why this is <laughs> it's funny? Okay, give me a second, okay? Let me see it. Uh, coverage. So, we did uh, a drone sniffing of leaking meth, uh, the pipeline. We have fugitive methane, meaning a little bit the methane. So, uh, on the, in the end of March, Okay, end of March, we did a mission in Livermore. There is a PG&E uh, gas facility, okay? So after this mission, so we did the mission. After the mission, and uh, the media cover, media coverage is everywhere, it's like, uh, so this is a list of uh, the media coverage, okay? And so I can, I can share this one, uh, this file in our uh, announcement you can click more links I just give you a, fa a flavor about flying drones with innovative ideas you can create a business so let me click this one hello no. hey what's up my friend Cal <laughs> <laughs> Even I don't know what is this language. <laughs> oh, I think we need to chat. <laughs> Why PGN give me a link on this? Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Thousands of employees have since been fired. 
It's a drone coming to your neighborhood, but not to take pictures. This drone detects dangerous chemicals. NBC Bay Area's business and tech reporter Scott Budman is in the newsroom. And Scott, you got to see this drone in action. Yeah, Janelle, this one has a deep space pedigree, but the goal is very terrestrial. Fly around and detect the presence of harmful gases. It's a small drone that can do a lot to keep us safe. It's a lightweight space-age drone coming to a hood near you to fly around and detect methane gas. So we got another hit, a methane leak. PG&E is working with NASA to this test this drone, is a which is John. similar to a craft used to detect That's, uh, methane Greg on and Mars. Derek. These experiments are important in demonstrating that this is a Lance Christensen, my partner in JPL. For public safety, reducing pollution. <clears throat> Instead of a camera on board, this drone has sensors that can detect even tiny amounts of methane in the air as it flies. Really trusting their measurements and saying confidently that this is where the leak is, and we can then send boots on the ground to pinpoint it to find the true leak. Eventually, the goal is to sell the drone so you and I can do our own testing. NASA, JPL, pg &E. Everybody's very interested in seeing this thing commercialized. If you're interested, no word on pricing yet, but PG&E says the drone was able to detect methane even in very small amounts. The initial testing was at large power plants. They say the ones we saw today were much smaller. The crews through neighborhoods and business parks. Jessica? Okay, thank you very much, Scott. Well, going for TV Gold and be... Okay, you have seen enough, right? So, uh, so... So the water drone, this gas leaking detection drone, and so on and so forth. So the most recent uh, activity was uh, last week, my, t my crew, my team, was in the Maryland, Baltimore and uh, Gas and Electricity Company, BGNE, uh, &E, not PGNE, &E, Baltimore. So they did this real, uh, real mission in a real neighborhood. It was a big success. It's for the first time in the nation we did this BGE routine checking of the methane leak in a real neighborhood. So we expect to see media coverage, a large scale coverage later. Um, so I already seen the initial report. Very encouraging. Okay, very interesting. I remember flying a drone in a real neighborhood itself is very tricky. Lots of things to deal with. The compliance issue, legal issue, privacy issue, so on and so forth. Okay? And the good thing is, Brandon is going to tell you, as a UC member, you are as a UC student, if you follow the correct steps, you will be automatically covered by our blanket exemption from FAA and you, every time you fly a drone, legally and compliant, it will be automatically covered by a million dollar liability. A million dollar liability. So as a UC student, UC researcher, UC staff, UC graduate students, undergraduate students, all will be covered like that, okay? But we need to listen to Brandon's presentation carefully today to be eligible for that $1 million liability coverage. You have to follow certain protocols, okay? And I understand why there's a need to follow that. So that's safety part, okay? Not only your safety, but others or other properties, okay? So. We got enough uh, taste of, of the drones. Uh, by the way, the Utah State flying the fixed wing, our team used to be very expert on fixed wing. Uh, right now, we are both fixed wing and a rotary wing. Okay, you can see the gas, the water are all rotary wing, the quarter rotor, okay? So in this course, we do not focus on fixed wing. Fixed wing, the fixed wing is more involved, okay? More involved. Why? Because for the rotary wing, you can fly in the air, hovering like this, staying here, or slowly moving. 
of a fixed wing to have enough lift to keep the aircraft in the air, what ne you need to do? You need to generate enough lift. How to generate the lift? You need to move fast enough. Just like you have an aircraft that you take off, you have to run fast, 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 then you, you can fly. So if you fly slower than critical, some critical uh, speed, you'll fall, okay? That's understandable. So that's why fixed wing is harder, okay? So I'd like to walk you through the catalog description. This is a, a mineral uh, systems for created the course. We offered in last four semester, okay? And I think uh, it was considered as uh, successful. I also learned a lot from my class about which part is too hard, okay? Which part is, you know, uh, too much, okay? So I, I'm still uh, doing this kind of uh, uh, adjustment. And again, then we condense into six weeks. There may be some um, places are not well tuned. So I'll, I'll try to make everybody barely at the boundary of the comfortable zone, okay? You don't feel so comfortable, you don't feel so uncomfortable, okay? So uh, that's the way we learn, okay? We learn. For those who believe that uh, 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 let's have fun while we're learning, Probably is not at this stage. Professional stage, you really need to put in the efforts. If you just watch and listen and, you know, no, 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 it's not going to work. You have to put in efforts. We need to do quizzes, homework, projects, presentations, attending class, write essays, you know, uh, watching the deadlines under pressure, I mean time pressure, and so on and so forth. So then you really learn. It's not that pleasant sometimes. You have to run past the deadline. Okay, so let's try to say this. You know, I didn't change this description. It's the same as last four semester. The only thing different is the time scale. Instead of 16 weeks, we do six weeks. Okay? But the total amount of efforts is this, uh, are the same. So, so we are going to learn essential foundational design integration, operational knowledge, okay, these are fundamental knowledge, operational knowledge, design knowledge, and integration knowledge. We didn't say we are going to construct a drone from scratch. We don't. Don't expect that. We will give you, we have several drones platforms for you to play to construct, to assemble from parts, that's not important to us, okay? Understand it, and how to operate it, how to integrate things together, that's more important. So our, our objective is to meet the emerging, emerging meaning we have more and more uh, jobs showing up, okay? Uh, showing up, uh, workforce demands, okay, workforce demands. I want to add one remark I forgot to tell you. For the, uh, for the fixed wing doing the mapping, the video, uh, uh, the person showed up the face. Uh, his name is uh, Austin Jensen. He's my former PhD student. Right now he's with uh, Amazon Prime Air, okay, in Seattle. Okay. So um, yeah, maybe he can refer you a job. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, so we need to cover the topics of history, classification, and applications. Talking about safety compliance. This is basically for the week one, okay? Week one. Uh, safety compliance is um, from uh, 11.30. Brandon Stark will be here, okay? He will be here. And uh, starting from next week, we are going to look into the components. So what are the individual elements in the drone? And understand the subsystems, okay? So it will be a little bit overwhelming uh, if you never uh, um, disassemble or, or tear down a drone before. 
So we're going to do something on that. Uh, then I do need to cover flight dynamics and aerodynamics. Because these two are the foundations of the flights. So if you don't have enough background knowledge, you saw it's flying, but you don't know how, why and how it flies. So that's, that's very embarrassing, is it? So at least you heard about something. Although it, each, one is, each one here is, uh, it can be independent of course. Like one semester long, course on navigation. One semester long, flight dynamics. It can be like that. But we need exposure to all these things, okay? So navigation control, payload integration, we are going to talk about it. Mission planning, sense and avoid. And also discuss about use cases. Right now we already covered three use cases. Okay, water sampling, gas sniffing, and, uh, and remote sensing, okay? Taking pictures, okay. So there are, how many cases there? Infinity. It's only limited by your imagination, agree? That's why the first homework, we're going to focus on that. So use your imagination, I, I expect to read your two pages. Only two pages right up. Regarding, you are, I already posted that homework, I think. So regarding you are having a startup company, okay? Or you think about it, you are going to have one. So uh, then you need to address, how can I survive? You know, it's not a welfare center. You need to compete with your competitors. So what's your idea? Or how you are going to do, okay? okay. And some other emerging topics. So this can be changed from time to time, something happens. So um, for right now, I think the emerging topics for me is, to me, to my interest is swarming. That means that we need to take a break. Uh, swarming, meaning you fly multiple drones. But however, flying multiple drones are considered as illegal right now by single operator. So we are waiting, maybe FAA will change mind, we'll have some uh, different rules, okay? Different rules. So it's still evolving, so that's, it may emerge. So let me, uh, let me uh, emphasize that the course is lab intensive, meaning uh, the lab usually is in the regular semester is uh, three hours lecture per week and three hours lab per week, right? So any other four credit courses like that. It's for lab intensive. So right now we're condensed to uh, tw uh, six weeks. So it's six hours lecture per week. Every lecture is uh, th uh, three hours, 180 minutes. And six hours lab session per week is two, three hours labs per week. So, so Monday, Wednesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you, you, you don't have, it's not stop. You want to have Friday. To, to rest. And also you need to spend time to read, to digest, do the homework. So together, um, so you can see, let's do the math. Six plus six is 12, okay? Let's assume that you, you add another one to three times, one to two times, okay, of this amount of time. Usually is one to one at least, right? So it's a 12 plus 12. It's 24 hours. So I, I try not to be so aggressive. So let's say 18 to 20. It's a reasonable expectation you should spend every week on this course. Including you read emails, uh, browsing the CAT course, everything related to this course. Adding together is uh, this amount of effort, okay? If you don't have that time, budget it. You should not take this course. Okay. So we have uh, two three hour lectures, and are we able to continue on schools? Can you repeat? We have a uh, two three hour uh, lecture, right? Or yeah. Week? Yes. And we're always going to sit on schools. Uh, you can stand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not very comfortable, like uh, the normal classroom setting. I assume uh, I'm going to take uh, take a break in the middle. The, the alarm clock just uh, 
second, I know you are tired, but uh, I'll make it less, uh, less so, okay? I'll entertain everybody better and better. And so, um, let's take a break. Um, so you know that you are all here, you know where we are. How many miles away from our campus? Uh, uh, 14 minutes drive if we do that. So 10 miles away. Okay, it's, it's from our uh, from campus to here is 10 miles. It's the way I already drove on this pass infinite number of times, <laughs> back and forth. Okay. And uh, that door on there is is here. This is the door of your entrance. You can park in here for free. This is the front entrance. I'm going to do a card access for everybody here, and the restrooms are here. You can get out. I'll just next next door okay so we are here this is our lab our Mesa lab is here so you walk a little bit to here and our AIA club is in here how many of you AIAA? only two why are you on that? I, I used to be oh okay is there a reason you are not? Uh, I don't uh, okay I, I think uh, I think you guys should consider to be AIAA you know, uh, it will add value to your resume, it's consistent to your drone preference to course on that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's okay, you have that freedom. <laughs> I just encourage you to be, in, so you take a look of what they have in here, also get a, a sense, I'm advertising. I'm a faculty and um, faculty advisor for this IWA club. I'm, I'm supporting this club. So they are doing very well, and they have space in here, tools. So um, we're going to have a lab tour, okay? After about 10 minutes break, then we are going to have a lab tour. After the lab tour, we'll continue our lecture, okay? So I'll lead you to take a look of uh, the facilities around. Okay, you, 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 can, you can take a break. So we'll continue. Come back in 10 minutes, so we have 10 minutes.